Hallelujah. It takes courage. On April 12th, 2014, I'm a 27-year-old man, and I find myself standing at an altar. I find myself standing at an altar <laughs> because I'm getting ready to get married. I am scared out of my mind. Everything, everything that's on the inside of me is telling me to turn <laughs> and, and just leave us all behind. Speak, Pastor. Everything that's on the inside of me is telling me, you know what, CW, you're, you're not fit for this. <laughs> you're, 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 not, you're not able to be the man of God that he's called you to be. Minister. And, 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 and before you know it, I hear a song that comes on. And this song wasn't it wasn't it wasn't a Christian song. No, 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 no. It wasn't a Christian song. This song was called Superman by a woman by the name of Monica. Well, you better minister, Pastor. It was called Superman. And, and, and what ended up taking place in this situation was when I watched my bride come down the aisle. Oh my. Huh. Oh my. When I watched my bride, when I watched her come down the aisle, she's she's crying uncontrollably. My. And I'm shaking out of my mind. And, and, and it gets to a portion of the song that says waking up to you is like waking up next to super, superman. My, my. <laughs> and right then and there, I had to realize, I had to, I had to realize that this entire situation was bigger than me. Oh, my. So she approaches the aisle. She, she approaches the altar. And, and as soon as she approaches the altar, her hand is shaking like this. Uh -huh. And I remember just reaching out my hand and touching her. Uh-huh. And tell her to calm down. Mama. And as soon as I told her to calm down, she said, okay. And from then on, I realized that her response will be predicated based off of how I led. You better minister. Her response will be predicated based off of the leader that was on the inside of me. Mama. Say, it takes courage. It takes courage. And one thing that you have to understand about Superman, hallelujah, is that his number one fear wasn't just a kryptonite. His number one fear wasn't just, well, wasn't just that he wanted to be the best he could be for Lois Lane. <laughs> no, 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 no. His number one fear was his fit, the fear of himself. Yeah. Mama. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was the fear of himself, looking at himself in the mirror. How, how, how am I supposed to be the man that I'm supposed to be? How am I supposed to be self-controlled in the midst of everything that's going on around me? Everybody say it takes courage. It takes courage. It takes, it takes, it takes courage. And what is courage? What is courage? Courage is the ability to do something that frightens you. <laughs> courage is bravery. Courage is boldness in the face of adversity. Everybody say it takes courage. It takes courage. So let's start off by going to Joshua chapter 1. And let's start at verse 5. Hallelujah. And, 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 and to give you a rundown of, of Joshua chapter 1, this is when Joshua was stepping into a stage of leadership. God, steps, God starts off by telling him, Joshua, my son Moses is dead. My servant Moses is dead. Now you have to lead these people. Joshua is scared out of his mind. Joshua is frightened because he's never been thrust into a leadership position before. But he knew that it would take courage. See, each and every last one of you on the inside of this place are leaders in your own right, and you don't even realize it. You better say that. You better say that. It's not just about being a leader behind a pulpit. You're, you're called to lead your family. You better say that. You're called to be a supervisor on that job. That's a leader. Uh-huh. Wherever you are, wherever your sphere of influence is, that's where God has called you to lead that stampede. Mm. Come on. No one, everybody say no one. No, no one. No one will be able to stand up against you a few days in your life. All the days. All. All the what? All, All the days. Everybody say the days of our life. The days of our life. Uh, it's a soap opera. Y'all get out of there. <laughs> As I, was with Mo, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you, nor what? As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. As I was with Moses, he never called him to be Moses. Jesus. 
He said, as I was with Moses, I will be with you. Amen. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Nor forsake you. Let's go to the next verse. Get strong. I need you to get strong. Is that what that says? Be strong. Be strong. You don't realize that it's not until you step that everything that you thought was not even there, that's what comes out of you. It's not until the pressure is applied to your life and the oil is squeezed till you can really see what God has placed on the inside of you. Be strong. Strength is the ability to, to withstand great pressure. Jesus. The ability to withstand great pressure. Be strong and what? Courageous. courageous. Hmm. Be strong and courageous. Because you, everybody say you. 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 Scratch that. Everybody say me. 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 Everybody say I. I. Will lead these people. Will lead these people. <laughs> to inherit. The land I swore to their forefathers to give them. Let's go to the next verse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be strong and very courageous. He just told them that once before, didn't he? Because a lot of the times we allow ourselves to get in the way. God, if it's you, I need another sign. God, I need you. I, I, I need you to make sure that, 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 that these people right here, the light is going to be green as soon as I get there. And then when I get to buckets, I'm going to see somebody holding a cup of ice in their hand like this. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> we look for too many signs. Step out on what he's told you to. We walk by faith and not by sight. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you do not turn from it to the right or to the what that you may be successful wherever you go let's go to the next verse let's go to the next verse let's go to the, to the next verse do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth do what meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it then you will be what? Prosperous and su Jesus. successful. Like the New Living Translation, it says, study this book of law. Study this book of law continually. Mm. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be sure to obey all that is written in it. Mm -hmm. Only then will you succeed. Oh, yeah. Study this book of law. Study this book of law. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the, the word, word of truth. Of truth. That's your Bible. Study. Study. And we have a lot of people who just want to scam over. My, my. We have to study. We have to meditate. We have to ponder. We have to roll this over in our minds on a daily basis. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised according to Psalms 113 verse 3. That's your Bible. Let's go to the next verse. Yes, sir. Have I not suggested to you? Have I not commanded to you? It's an order. It's a precept. It's the law that I've set in place. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. That's three times. We see that three times. From verse 5 all the way to verse 9. Say, I don't need any more confirmation. Say it. Say it. Say it. Say, I don't need any more confirmation. Say it. I'm telling you. I have you. I have you. I have you in the palm of my hand is what he's saying. And whoever touches you touches the apple of my eye. Yes. Yes. Oh. Hallelujah. Mm. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. I need three people. Y'all come up here real quick. Three, three, three. Can I get four, four, five, six, seven? I need three people. Just three, just three. That's all I need is three. Can you see them on the camera? Can we see them? You might, you might have to move around a little bit. Everybody say it takes courage. It takes courage. It takes courage. One thing that you have to understand, in order for you to be a leader, you have to be led. Come on now. I heard somebody say it like this. Don't tell me who you're over until you tell me who you're under. Amen. Amen. 
You have to have somebody pouring into you so that you can pour into others. The Bible says it's like the oil that drips from the beard of Aaron and flows down his skirt. The oil flows. It comes down from the head all the way down to the people. So whatever you're sitting under, whatever you're subservient and you're submissive to, that's what's going to get into your life. So it matters who's pouring into your life. Amen. My first phase that is going to take me, take me, take me breaking free and, 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 and going against the grain, walking in courage, is this place that they call Egypt. Egypt is a, is a, is a place of spiritual destitute. This is a place of spiritual bondage. You find yourself in a state of being weak-willed. Everybody say weak-willed. It's the inability, uh, it's, the, it's the inability to resist temptation. This is the place where the enemy will keep you gripped and he will keep you oppressed. But you need somebody to help you out of that situation because you can't do it in your own strength. You need somebody to lead you from out of Egypt. Moses led the Israelites from out of Egypt. He led them from out of Egypt. This is a place where you're literally oppressed. This is the place where a hand of tyranny is on your life and you have to break free. Everybody say, I have to break free. And when I move from a place of Egypt, I find myself in a wilderness. See, we thought we automatically go to the promised land. That's not the way the Father operates. The next phase of my life that is going to take me pressing through and, 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 and finding myself in a state of courage is this place of wilderness. Everybody say wilderness. This is a dry and a desolate place. This is the place of testing. This is the place of trial. This is the place where the world in which I thought I knew is taken from me. I, th I thought this person was going to be by my side every step of the way. I thought I was going to have this, this, these, these people that are, that are rolling with me all throughout my life. But I find myself in this state where I want to be better. I came from Egypt and y'all want to keep me here. I came from Egypt and now I'm here in the wilderness and I'm looking around and there's nobody there. There's nobody by my side in this place. But what it does, it drives me into a deeper level of prayer. It drives me into a deeper level of consecration. It drives me into a deeper level to where, you know what, the things I used to do, my grandma used to say, I don't do no more. The places I used to go, I don't go anymore. I'm a better place, I'm, excuse me, I'm a better person because of this place of wilderness. And then, I gotta ask myself, come here, Hendo, you're closer to me. You're closer to me. And I got to ask myself, I got to ask myself, am I going to be okay? Am I going to be okay if Moses doesn't go to this next phase with me? Am I going to be okay if I know the person that led me from out of this Egypt, the person that led me from out of this bondage, the person that helped me break free from these shackles, and I told them, you know what, I'll be with you forever. I'm going to be loyal to you. You my ride or die. Come on now. You my ride or die. One thing that you have to understand is that you have people that are in your life for seasons. Some that are in your life for reasons. And then you have others that are in your life for the long haul. Moses was not a long hauler. Moses was somebody to help you get from out of Egypt and stop holding on to that. Moses had to go on with his life <laughs> and there was somebody else who had to lead the people into the promised land. So you have to be okay with Moses going up to the father so that Joshua <laughs> can lead you into the promised land. So you have to be open when God brings that other individual into your life. You have to be open when the Father places individuals into your life to pour into you in different phases and, se and seasons of your life. Is this making sense to you? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Say my promised land. My promised land. my promised land is my place of purpose. 
I've been through Egypt. I've been through the wilderness. And then I find myself in my promise. I find myself in a state where I'm, I'm literally stepping into who the Father has called me to be, but it's going to take courage. Everybody say courage. courage. The ability to do something that frightens me. The ability to do something that I'm scared of. One thing that you have to understand about fear and butterflies, they're two totally different things. Fear is tantalizing. It paralyzes you and it prevents you from moving forward in the things of God. But butterflies means that I can't do this in my own strength. <laughs> Father, I have to decrease so that you can increase in my life, according to John 3.30. Everybody say my promised land. Hey Amen. I want y'all to praise God for these people up here. Thank y'all so much. I appreciate y'all. I appreciate y'all. I appreciate y'all. These are my stages and my phases. That I, have to, that I have to walk through in order for me to attain my promise. I have my Egypt, I have my wilderness, and then I have my, I have my promised land. The first time I ever held a microphone in my hand, you guys. Everybody say true story. True story. The first time I ever held a microphone in my hand, my hand shook uncontrollably. And the only thing I said was, Lord, please. Don't let people see the outward sign of what I'm feeling on the inside of me. My, 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 my. That's good, Pastor. An outward sign of what I'm feeling on the inside of me. Because I said, you know what, Father? I'll do whatever you tell me to do. I'll go wherever you tell me to go. I'll say whatever you tell me to say. And right now, I can't articulate my words. But as I open my mouth, I have to trust your word and not just quote it. Mm. Come on now. Uh, trust the word. Because a lot of people will quote the scripture. Yeah. But do they really and truly believe it? Do they trust it with everything that they have on the inside of them? Come on, Pastor. Come on, preach. So as I have, as I started to open my mouth, I realized, Father, that it is not me speaking, but it's you that's doing it through me. Amen. I can study and I can prepare all day long, but you are going to give the people the word that they need. Amen. Come on. That's why I take the background and I allow you to take the Come on. take the lead. Courage is the ability to do something that frightens you. It's bravery. It's boldness. The, the, the Hebrew word for it is amats. Everybody say amats. A-M-A-T-S. It means to be alert physically or mentally. It means steadfast-minded, strong, established. You're fortified in your heart. The Greek word is parasea. Everybody say parasea. Parasea. Parasea is unflinching authority. Unflinching authority in the midst. Of everything that you're going through. My sister and I used to watch a movie when we were younger called Wizard of Oz. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Don't judge me. <laughs> oh, kid probably still watching today, for me. So watch this. So what ended up taking place was in, in this movie, in this movie, there was this, this young lady by the name of Dorothy. Come on now, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dorothy had a little red shoes on and she... She, she, she easing on down the yellow brick road. And, and, and on her way, on her way, she sees a scarecrow. And this scarecrow, this scarecrow is, is in desperate need of a brain. Everybody say a brain. A brain. And to fast forward, they, they keep walking. They keep walking because they're, they're on their way to see the Oz. And then they see something in the bush called a tin man. Everybody say a tin man. A tin man. And a tin man is in need of a heart. Everybody say if I only had a heart. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then they keep going. As they're progressing, what ends up taking place is they run into a lion. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. They run into a lion. And when they, when they run into this lion, this lion, he knew he was a lion. But he didn't believe that he was a liar. Jesus. <laughs> Mighty good. So, 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 so what he was, what he was, what he was desperately, in, desperately in need of was courage. What he was desperately in need of was courage. He was a lion. And one thing that you have to understand about lions is that the Bible says in Proverbs 28 verse 1 that the wicked flee when no man pursues them. Jeez. But the righteous, everybody say the righteous, the righteous. are as bold as a lion. Yes, yes. Guaranteed. But the righteous are as, are as bold as a lion. And he needed courage, but he couldn't, he couldn't quite find it because everything would have him going bump in the night. 
Because he didn't have validation, because he didn't have acceptance, because he didn't have anybody pouring into him to let him know who he really and truly Come on. was. Amen. Come on now. You see, the Bible says in Proverbs 23, verse 7, as a man thinks, so is he. No, 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 no. Uh -uh, uh -uh. As a man thinks in his heart, so uh -huh, is he. Uh -huh. uh huh. I can think all day long, but do I believe it in my heart? Amen. Jesus. Amen. That's good. My mind and my heart have to be synonymous. They have to be concurrent. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. I got a question for you. What are you thinking on? Jesus. What are you thinking on? Where's your thought life? Do you know that you need to desperately cast down some imaginations in your life? Or are you trying to stack a thought upon a thought? See, the Bible says in Philippians 2 verse 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let, everybody say let. That means to allow or give permission to. I still have to allow it to come in. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers, let me say one more thing before I close this letter. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right. Think about things that are pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting it to practice all you learned from me and heard from me and saw me doing it. The God of peace will be with you. Mighty good, Pastor. Philippians 4, 8 and 9. So if I don't know what to think on, the Bible tells me what to. Come on. Philippians 4, verses 8 and 9, that's your thought test. Am I thinking on these things? Yes, sir. Am I thinking on those things? The Bible says to set your mind on things above and not on things of the earth. Amen. Colossians 3 verse 2. Are y'all getting the Bible this morning? Come on, preach, pastor. What am I thinking about? Because as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Courage, boldness, unflinching authority. We were in in a store, a smokehouse by the, by the name of Precious. Take your time, pastor. Take your time. And this right now, this, this, this uh, up, uh, up until today, this is Caleb's favorite store. Yeah. But everybody say it didn't start off that way. It didn't start off that way. As soon as we get out the car for the first time, we're getting ready to walk into the doors, but then Caleb sees something that's standing there doing like this. <laughs> and it was a sausage. <laughs> Everybody say sausage. sausage. I didn't know what it was at first. I was scared. I said, man, I had to ask them. I said, man, is that a bean? <laughs> so we're walking, and, and, and it caught Caleb by surprise. He said, oh. <laughs> and then he come jump in my arms. He said, Dada. Yeah. I said, I'm right here, son. I said, it's okay. I said, it's only a statue, man. So he said, oh, okay. Yeah. So he looking around, and, 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 and every Sunday, we usually kind of go over there. Right. We started to do it on the regular. And this right here started to turn to... Let me touch it. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 Come on, Pastor. Walk that out. I'm, st I'm still not going. Yeah. Come on, Pastor. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and each Sunday, each Sunday, we would go by. He'll come a little, come on, come a little closer. Yeah. Come on. Minister. He'll come a little, he'll come a little, a little closer come until on, eventually he taking pictures with it. Yeah, 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 just like that. But it took time. Yeah. Everybody say it took time. It took time. Yeah. It took time. Yeah. It took time. It was the ability for him to do something that frightened him. I couldn't do it for him. His mom couldn't do it for him. His sister couldn't do it for him. He had to revel, had to have a revelation on his own. And it's not until you have a revelation that you break free from some situations. Amen. We grow, listen to me, we grow through revelation. We grow in God as he reveals himself to us. Father, you, you deliver me from out of this situation. And I know that you're faithful to do it again. You deliver me from out of that situation. And I know you're faithful to do it again. He's the God who is a deliverer. He's the God who's faithful. He's a God. Who is faithful? Is this making sense to y'all this morning? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want y'all to, I want you to go with me. Let's take it to, um, let's go to Luke. No, no, let's go to Numbers, chapter 13. Hallelujah. All right. Let's go to Numbers, chapter 13. Take your time, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 13, let's start at verse 26. Let's start at verse 26. 
Are y'all getting something so far this morning? Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Mighty good, Pastor. Amen. Mighty good. Numbers chapter 13, let's go to verse 26. God, you're faithful. They came back to Moses and Aaron, and this is talking about the Israelites. And the whole Israelite community at Kadesh in the desert of Paran. There they reported to them and to the whole assembly. Everybody say the church. The church. And showed them. Let's go to the next verse. The fruit of the land. Let's go to the next verse. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. They gave Moses this account. We went into the land to which you sent us. And it does flow with milk and honey. Here is its fruit. Hallelujah. Let's go to the next verse. Let's go to the next verse. But, everybody say but. But, but the people who live there are powerful. And the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw descendants of Anak there. Say, I'm trying to get to the fruit. I'm trying to get to the fruit. But there's going to be some things that are going to try to stop me from getting my fruit. Oh, yeah. Let's go to the next verse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are y'all trekking with me? Yes, sir. The Amalekites live in the Negev. That's the hill country. Those are the mountains. The Hittites. Everybody say the Hittites. The Hittites come from the sons of Heath. This is the spirit of fear. The sons of Heath. This is, the, this is the fear. This is the spirit of fear that will block you and that will grip you from progression in your life. Everybody say the Hittites. Everybody say the Jebusites. This is the spirit of oppression. It oppresses you. It's a cruel and oppressive ruler. And the Amorites. Everybody say Amorites. Amorites. This is the spirit of slander. This is the spirit of gossip. The Bible says if you bite and devour each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. In Galatians 5 verse 15. They live in the hill country and the Canaanites live near the sea and along the Jordan. The Hittites, Jebusites, Amorites. Let's go to the next verse. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Then, CW, son. Then Caleb, he did what? He silenced the people. Silence is a complete absence of sound. He said, hey. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The people before Moses and said, we should go up and take possession. Everybody say, take possession. Take possession. We should, we should take possession. We shouldn't ask for it. The kingdom of heaven suffer violence, and the violence take it. Take it by force. That's the Bible. In Matthew 11, verse 12. I, I, I take possession of these things. It means to occupy by driving out the previous tenants. I occupy by driving out the previous tenants. Driving them out. We should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. Say, we can. Yes, we can. Let's go to the next verse. But the men who had gone up with him said, uh-oh, we can't attack those people. Everybody say, we can't attack those people. We can't attack those people. Everybody say, fear. 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 Come on, man. We, fear. we can't attack those people. Yeah. That's the son. That's the Hittite spirit. Well, they, they are stronger than we are, say the Jebusite. Mm. That's oppression. Mm. Now, let's go to the next verse. <laughs> and they did and they whoa and they did what? Spread. And they spread among the Israelites a what kind of report? Amorite Everybody spirit. say Amorite spirit. Amorite spirit. Hittites, Jebusites, and Amorites will stop you from possessing the land that the Father has called you to inherit. Being a, being fearful? <laughs> Being under being under a heavy hand of control and manipulation, which is witchcraft. Come on, you better stay in the house. Come on, preach. Oh, Jesus, they not ready for that. Why are we there? Why are we there? Why are we there? Why are we there? Let's stay there. Let's stay there. Let's stay there. Mighty good. Mighty good. Let's stay there. Let's stay there. Witchcraft is manipulation, intimidation, and domination. Come on now. Come on now. Manipulation, intimidation, and domination. And even if somebody is being silent, that's still a form of witchcraft. Come on now. Come on. Come on. You better preach, preach pastor. Oh, so, okay. Preach, so you preach pastor. pastor. You're not going to do that for me? Okay. All right. Okay. 
Oh, I, I done done, oh, I did all this for you, but, it, but it's okay, though, because God, God got this. Yeah. Oh, so now you want to add God into it. Uh -huh. That's still a form of witchcraft. Manipulation, intimidation, and domination. And the purpose of it is to get you to capitulate. Everybody say capitulate. Oh, yeah. capitulate. Capitulate means to surrender. means to relinquish your will. Come on now. If he can get you to surrender, if he can break you all the way down, he knows that he has you. Manipulation, intimidation, and domination. And the Bible says in Micah 5 verse 12, I will, not you, the Father will do this. Okay. <laughs> he said, I will destroy your witchcraft and you will no longer cast spells. Come on. Come on. Come on. In the name of Jesus. It's a spell that you're under. And you don't even realize it. And a lot of times you don't know you're under a spell until you're out of that. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> out of Egypt. Until you're out of that Egypt. Uh -huh. I tell you, I'm in wilderness. Uh -huh. mm. Come on, come on, minister. Spellbinding, you foolish Galatians. Mm. Who has bewitched you? Mm. Before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. I would like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the Spirit by observing the law or by believing what you heard? Mama. Galatians 3, verses 1 and 2. Ooh, Jesus. He said, you foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Who has bamboozled you? Who has run you amok? Who has done these things to you? It's manipulation, intimidation, and domination, but you have to understand that God will no longer allow you. In this season, he will no longer allow you to be under the spell. If you choose to be under the spell, it's your choice. Say, I have to break free. Ah, they have something called a Stockholm Syndrome. Have you ever heard of Stockholm Syndrome before? Ah, pull it, Father, pull it. So with the Stockholm Syndrome, what takes place in this situation is, this took place in Stockholm, Sweden. Right. In Stockholm, Sweden, what ended up occurring was these, these people came in and they robbed a bank. Walk it out. And as soon as they robbed this bank, when, when it was time for the people to, 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 to go and testify against the bank robbers, the people showed, showed unnatural kindness to their bank robbers. Because what ended up taking place was the bank robbers fed them while they were there held hostage. Well, they took care of them uh -huh. and they talked to them really, really nicely. Forced them. And these people got under a spell because the people were being nice to them. <laughs> Not realizing that you've just shook hands with a criminal. You've just come in cahoots with the enemy just because they, just because they, can, they can talk real nice to you. Wow. Just because they can flatter you with their speech. You better watch it. Come on. Because the scripture says that even Satan can disguise himself as an angel of light. Come on, baby. That's your Bible. Even Satan in 2 Corinthians 11, verse 14, can disguise himself as an angel of light. And he has ministers who do the same exact thing. In the church. Is this making sense to y'all? Yes, sir. Everybody say, Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo! Thank you. Mighty good God. Where was I at? Y'all put me back on track. What was it? Put back on track. Manipulation, intimidation, dominant, and they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. They said the land we explored devours those living in it. All the people we saw there, let's go to the next verse, are of great size. We saw the Nephilim there, the descendants of Anak. Oh, those are the giants that are in the land. They come from the Nephilim. We seemed, everybody say, we seemed. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we looked the same to them. So a lot of the times, your perception will always create your reality. Wow. The way you see yourself, you automatically think somebody else sees you the same way. Jesus. That's somebody... Had somebody come up to me before, man, and that, this is, I was, it was a long time ago, and I was still trying to get my walk right with Christ. I didn't know who I was. My identity was kind of shot right. in the things of God. And, 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 and I said, man, when you, when you see me, what do you see? He said, I see somebody who's bold and very assertive. Okay, but within myself, I didn't see that. Within myself, I was afraid. Oh. Within, my, within myself, it was ugly every time I looked in the mirror. But, what, but you don't realize you don't realize that the Father sees your finished product. Yes, he, does. he doesn't see you the way you are right now. When he looks at you, he sees the apple of his eye, like I said earlier before. He's the, he sees the individual that the Father has created. My God, oh, man, I'm looking at faces right now, man. Hey, what's being spoken over you? Amen. What's being poured into your life? Amen. Do you realize that it takes five positive words to override one negative one? Yeah. Jesus. It takes five, but my God, it takes five positive words to override one negative. What is being spoken over you? 
What are you speaking over yourself? The Bible says that David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Amen. So if nobody else affirms you, I'm dead to you. I know I'm tired. I know I'm right. You better speak to yourself. I don't care what you do behind closed doors. It don't matter what somebody else says about you. It's about what you say about yourself. Is this making sense to y'all? Yes. Oh, my God. Mighty good, Pastor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good work. Hallelujah. Let's go to Proverbs 21, verse 29. Proverbs 21, verse 29. Hallelujah. 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 Proverbs chapter 21. Verse 29. Courage. 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 A wicked man. A wicked man. They do what? A wicked man is bold. But an upright man gives thoughts to his ways. A wicked man puts up a bold front. Meaning he's bluffing. Everybody say bluffing. bluffing. Bluffing means a false display of confidence. Okay. It's a false display of confidence. He puts up a bold front. But as soon as the rubber meets the road, he's going to tuck tail and run. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of the times, an individual doesn't even have to open their mouth for you to see the strength and the courage that they have on the inside of them. Amen. Amen. Help me. Help a me true today. leader will always lead in silence. Help me today. Amen. Help it's not about today. it's not about you broadcasting your 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 accolades or your credentials. I got you. Yeah. I got you, Pastor. It's about what you're stepping and walking out in your everyday life. Yes, sir. Not just being a talker yes, or being sir. a doer. Yes, sir. The Bible Minister. says to be doers of the word and not hearers only. Yes. Deceiving yourself. Yes, sir. The wicked put up a bowl from they're the loudest person in the room. Man, look at me. Right. Man, look what God did for me. Right. And then you find them operating under false grace. Mm. False grace. Jesus. Thinking that the hedge of protection is there when it's really and truly not. My, my, my. Mm. Okay. Look what God did for me. But God would never put you in a situation to where you would have to struggle. You did that in your own just because you wanted Facebook likes. Amen. Yeah. Amen, minister. You did that on your own because you wanted all of these people to applaud you. I don't care if I get a well done from a man on earth. I'm trying to get a well done before the Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. That's how it's supposed to be. That's how it's supposed to be. Amen. Help me. A wicked man. A wicked man. Someone who is morally rebellious. He's a fool. The inability or refusal to apply spiritual truths to your everyday life. A wicked man. He puts up a bold front. But an upright man. Say a righteous man. He gives what? He gives thought to his ways, his course of life, the, the path in which he takes. He literally calculates the cost. He takes his time and he allows God's word to be a lamp unto his feet and a light unto his path. That's an upright man. Not a perfect man, but an upright man. Let's go to... Let's go to Acts chapter 4, verse 13. Are y'all getting blessed this morning by this word? Yes, sir. I don't want to stop. I don't want to stop. Holy Spirit, but when you tell me to, I will. All right. Acts chapter 4, verse 13. Acts chapter 4, verse 13. Hallelujah. 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 So this was the was the was the council that the people had to stand before. This was this was uh, Peter and John, and the Bible says that when they saw the what, courage. when they saw the what, courage. so courage can be seen. When they saw the courage, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and realized that they were uh oh, come on, come on y'all, they were what, unschooled. unschooled, ordinary men, they were what, astonished. astonished. And they took note that these men had been with who? Jesus. They were unschooled, ordinary men, and they were astonished, and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. School.
gives you an education. Come on now. School gives you knowledge. Come on now. But the fear of the Lord gives you wisdom. Amen. School. <laughs> school. School gives you understanding. School gives you education. School gives you knowledge. But the fear of the Lord is what brings about true wisdom. Wisdom from on high. Wisdom that comes from the Father. I heard somebody say it like this. A decree can take you where a degree can't. You better say that. I like that. Say that again. I like that. That's good. A decree can take you where a degree can't. Jesus. See, I, and me, I, I, I'm not too big on the cliches, but I'm like, Lord, give me Bible on that. Okay. Job 22, verse 28. You shall decree a thing, and it will be established. <laughs> you shall decree a thing, and it will be established. King's decree. So there's a king on the inside of you, and the king roars like a lion. The lion isn't the biggest in the jungle. The lion isn't the strongest. The lion isn't the fastest, but he thinks he is. And as a result of that, everybody else around him thinks he is. There are two animals that give off warning charges. To let you know that you're too close to their family. That's a gorilla and a lion. Yeah. Yeah. They give off a roar, boom, and they'll run at you and they'll charge. That's, 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 the, only time, that's the only opportunity you get. Because yeah. if you come at me and you come at my family, that means that you've gotten too close. Come on. You've gotten too close. And a lion's roar can be heard up to five miles away. Wow. Their roar literally lifts a cloud of dust. My, my, my. It's boisterous. Why do you think that the Bible says in Revelation 1.15 that God's voice is like the sound of many waters? Jesus. <laughs> it's boisterous. It's thunderous. He's the lion from the tribe of Judah, according to Revelation 5, verse 5. God, I love your word. The lion from the tribe of Judah. So if he's a lion from the tribe of Judah, why do I still live like I'm a little feline? Say, I have to rise up. I have to rise up. I have to rise up because my biggest, my, my biggest competition is, 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 is looking back at me in the mirror. That's my biggest competition. That's my biggest, my biggest competition. Watch this. Let's go to uh, Luke chapter 10, verse 19. God, I bless you. God, I bless you. There was a story of these two guys. Everybody say my thoughts. My thoughts. Say my perception. My perception. Will create my courage. Will create my courage. My thoughts and my perception will create my courage. Okay. And the story of these two guys. And these two guys, these two guys grew up in a very abusive home. Their dad was an alcoholic. He beat them every single day. He was very volatile. He was very tyrannical. And what ended up occurring in this situation was these, these were twin boys, and, 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 and when they got older, one of the boys was an alcoholic. One of the boys was very tyrannical, and one of the boys was very, very, very volatile. But the other one was very mellow. The other one was very, very calm. And so they were sent down, and they were interviewed, and, 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 and the question was posed to them, why in the world are you this way, but your brother is that way? The first brother said, because I grew up and my father did all those things. That's why I'm doing them. Yeah. They asked the next twin the same exact question. He said, because I grew up and I saw my father do those things. Two boys, two twin boys, same DNA, different outcomes. Yeah, because their perceptions were different. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to do that because my father did it. I'm doing that because my father did it. Your perception is going to always create your reality in life. Amen. You would automatically think that just because this one young man grew up in an environment like that, 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 that he would automatically uh, gravitate to the same exact thing his father did. But it hurt him so much that he vowed not to be an alcoholic. Amen. It hurt him so much that he vowed not to be tyrannical. It hurt him so much that he vowed not to be violental. And he said, you know what, my father did that. I'm not taking my children through the same exact thing. I'm breaking the cycle. It stops with me. Is this making sense to y'all this morning? Amen. Luke 10, 19. Get ready, to, get ready to wrap it up in a minute. Hallelujah. This is 
Jesus speaking. He said, I have done what? Given. I have given you. I have freely transferred the possession of something to someone. I freely transferred this to you. I have given you. That means that the law of grace is in operation. I have given you what? Authority. To do what? To trample on snakes and scorpions and to do what? Overcome. To overcome a few of the little powers. No, oh. All the power of the who? Yeah. Of the enemy. Nothing will do what? Yeah. Do we believe the scripture? Yeah. Absolutely. Because if we believe it, we will walk in courage. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If we believe in scripture, we will walk in boldness. Yeah. All scripture is God breathed and it's useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Yes, All scripture is God inspired. Yes, sir. All scripture. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions. I was uh, in high school and, and you know, we, we were out here in Nigga Lake, so we take the trash out with our shoes off. Yes. Come on, man. Train track feet, man. So, 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 so I pick up my, I pick up the garbage, and it's nighttime. I, I don't even think the light was on outside, and I ended up taking the trash and putting it in the dumpster. And when I put it in the dumpster, I, uh, I walked, and I felt something underneath my feet. Everybody say true story. true story. I felt something underneath my feet, and when I looked down, I saw a snake curled up. Okay. I jumped this high off the ground and I was running while I was in midair. I don't know how to explain it, but that's what happened to me. I cannot make this up. It cannot. This is not fabricated. You understand me? So, so, so I step on it, man, before you know it, I'm in the air like one of those cartoon characters. And I think I went to sleep the rest of the night. My eyes was up just like this. Like, I'm looking like, man, what in the world has just happened? But I trampled on that snake. I was in prayer, and I, and I thought about this scripture. He said, I'm giving you the authority. That's where the, that's where the snakes and scorpions are supposed to be. That's supposed to be under your feet. They're not supposed to be on top of your head. Do you realize that the higher and higher that the Father elevates you, that there's only a certain altitude that snakes can withstand? Oh, come on now. Wow. Come on, y'all. <laughs> that's good. Come that's on, good. man. Are y'all hearing me this morning? Woo! There's only a certain altitude that snakes can withstand I'm, before they I'm, freeze I'm, to death. I'm yeah. rising above the mm. You got to rise above the snakes. Oh, yeah. You got to rise above the scorpions. You got to rise above all of the naysayers. You got to rise above what they say when he came from that lineage. And they came from yeah. that lineage. And their mama used to do that. And their daddy used to do that. Say, I'm different. You got to rise above these situations and walk in boldness, walk in courage. Yeah. Uh -huh. And if you have to stand alone, you have to be okay with it. I will be okay. As long as you stick to this scripture, don't ever get outside of the word of God. Do not ever get outside of the confounds of the gospel. God has been too good for you. And when he delivered you from something, why go back to bondage? Come on. Come on. Jesus. The Bible says in Galatians 5 verse 1, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Uh -huh. Stand firm then and do not let yourself be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Okay. Yes, sir. Don't let yourself be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Yes, sir. Say, I'm free indeed. I'm free indeed. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. Say, nothing will harm me. Nothing will harm me. Is this a promise that's contained inside of his covenant? Yes. This is one of the promises that are, that's, that's contained inside of his covenant. And let me tell you something. God's promise will always override a perhaps in your life. My, my. If I'm sure of who the Father is, I don't have to perhaps anything. Okay. A perhaps is an uncertainty or a doubt. Amen. Do you know there's a man in Scripture who said perhaps God will rescue us? Have y'all ever read that before? Have y'all ever seen in Scripture that there was a man who said perhaps? Instead of, uh, instead of literally saying, you know what, <laughs> we're going to stand on God's promises. On Go to 1 Samuel 14, verse 6. 1 Samuel, <laughs> Samuel chapter 14, verse 6. God, I love your word. Amen. Hallelujah. Perhaps the Lord will act on our behalf. I think I handle the Lord from Satan. What about me? What about you? Hallelujah. 1 Samuel 14, verse 6. Repeat that after me. Say, God's promise. God's, God's promise. promise. Always overrides. Always overrides. And perhaps. Hallelujah. Amen. Jonathan said to his young armor bearer, come, let us go over to the outpost of the uncircumcised fellows. What does that say? Perhaps. Perhaps the Lord will act on our behalf. Nothing can hinder the Lord from saving, whether by many or by few. See, when I know who the Father is, I don't have to rely on a perhaps. 
I can walk in boldness, I can walk in confidence, and I can walk in courage. The Bible says the Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He's mighty to save. Nothing can hinder the Lord from saving, whether by many or by few. But he's mighty. He's mighty to save. Everybody say he's mighty to save. God is mighty to save. He's mighty. He's mighty to save. I, um, I was... Uh, just getting started in this building. And, um, when we first when we first got started, um, we would turn this opposite way over here. That's the way we were kind of turned. And um, I would go home and I would I would cry. I would I would wail. I would I would bawl my eyes out. I would bawl my eyes out because I would always I would always watch watch all types of negative reports coming back and you know. And, this is happening and that's happening and then I'm, I'm like, God, why in the world do I have to go through what I'm going through right now? And the reason why I have to go through what I'm going through is for each and every person that's in these seats. Because for an entire year, Thank you. I preach the way I preach, whether it's one person or whether it's a hundred people. I got you. Whether it's a thousand people, whether it's yep. whatever, whatever yes, the deal is. Yes, I sir. preach the way that I preach because I don't do this for y'all. I love y'all with everything on the inside of my heart. But when I minister, I minister to an audience of one. Yeah. Why? 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 Because for a full year, I was preaching to nothing but empty chairs. And I was, I was this close to giving up. I was this close to stopping. I was this close. I would go home and I would be like, God, I don't know what in the world. You call me to do this? If you call me to do this, why is this so hard? Why is this so gut-wrenching? I'm trying to build a ministry. But he said, I'm trying to build a man. Wow. Come on. Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I had two things fighting on the inside of me. And I had to relinquish my will. So whatever you're trying to build, I can promise you he's fighting you because he's trying to build something better within you. Okay. He's trying to build something on the inside of you. He's trying to develop something on the inside of you. He wants you to evolve so that you can grow and flourish into who he's called you to be. Y'all yes, praise God if y'all got something to say. Hallelujah. 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 Everybody standing with me in this place. Hallelujah. 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 Good word, Pastor. I want y'all to sing this song with me, man. Sing this song with me. Okay. God, my Savior. God, my healer. God, my deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. God, my Savior, God, my healer, God, my deliverer. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. Every praise. Is to our God. Every word of worship is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Y'all praise God in this place. Hallelujah. 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 Father, your word says, sing songs, hymns, and spiritual songs. That's it. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. Yes, in God. Ephesians 5, 19. So, Father, we believe by faith that wherever your people are, God, they just break out in songs of praise. Yes, they Lord. just break out, Father, so that, that the courage can be built on the inside of them. Yes, Lord. 
We come against the assignment of the enemy. We come against any attacks over their mind. And we say right now in Jesus' name, Father, that the truth of your word will continue to prevail in any and every situation. God, we bless you. And we don't take lightly that you've given us this opportunity. Mm. My, my, my. I speak life over each and every individual that's under the sound of my voice, man. Yes, Lord. And we thank you for your love and faithfulness in Jesus' name. Everybody in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.